Hey y'all, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Basha Sarah, and you're tuned into another episode of All The Things, where we literally talk about all of the things. So, we broke up. If that's something that resonates with you, this episode is for you. We broke up, I broke up with him, she broke up with me, I broke up with um, her, uh, he broke up with me. So, if that resonates with you, I am deeply, deeply sorry. Breakups are never easy. I uh, have broken up um, or been in a breakup per se. If you know Jared and I's story, I've talked about it many, many episodes episodes ago where I broke up with him. I think it was a total of three times, not my proudest moment. And um, it, it was a different type of breakup. It was more so I was wrestling with a lot of things internally. It wasn't a justified breakup. But I get to some degree how hard that is. I have also walked through breakups with several of my close friends and it's hard. It takes a mental toll. It hurts your heart. Um, It takes a physical toll on your body. And there's a lot of self-discovery and reflecting that goes on in breakups. So for those of you who we broke up, I broke up, I'm heartbroken, sit tight. This episode is you. So let's just jump right into it. I just wanted to give a couple tips. If you are currently getting over a breakup, over a heartache, um, you and your significant other decide to take a break. Um, if you're like Ross and Rachel, uh, let's not do the whole, we were on a break and you were actually not on a break, which side topic. Those of you who think Ross is justified, if you watch friends, if you think Ross is justified, I'm sorry, I'm not on your team. I truly wholeheartedly believe that Rachel was right. They weren't on a break. They never discussed, they never said, they never had a conversation. It was never in stone or set, like they never had a conversation that said, we are on a break, we're broken up. I can't remember exactly what she said, but essentially it was, you know, like, I don't want you around right now or whatever it may be, but they never broke up. So I'm very passionate about this. Jared believes otherwise. He's on Ross's side. I'm on Rachel's side. But comment below um, and let me know what you think about the whole Ross and Rachel situation. Were they actually broken up? And if you haven't watched that episode, you probably should. If you've never watched Friends, you should. It's actually a a really good show. Um, Mature audience only. (laughs) But anyway, tips for getting over a breakup. Every Life is America's pro-life diaper and wipes company. My family absolutely loves them. There's no harsh toxins. There's no chemicals. It's perfectly safe for your little one. We love every life, their mission, their vision, everything about them. Use my code VASHTY10 for 10% off your first order. That is VASHTY10 for 10% off your first order. And I just want to be real and practical with you listeners. Like you can say, pray it away, pray it through. God will heal you. And that is all great. That's good stuff. However, You can't just pray away a heartache. You can't pray away a breakup. You can't pray away the emotional turmoil that comes with a broken heart. So I wish that's funny I'm saying that because my first tip is, however, commit everything to prayer. Prayer is important. And essentially in praying, you are laying at the feet of Jesus, your heart and saying, God, I need you to heal me. I need you to mold me. I need you to restore my heart, restore the joy of my salvation. And that's not over spiritualizing things. Honestly, breakups, you have to grieve. And in grief, any type of grief, whether it's it's a loss of someone, loss of a job, um, loss of a family member, you have to grieve. And as believers, we go to the Lord in our grief. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And God will comfort you in your grief. God will comfort you as you're mourning the loss of someone you loved. So I highly advise commit, commit everything in prayer. Um, You will have thoughts of regrets. You will have thoughts of what ifs. You will have all the thoughts in the world. Um, And I think with breakups, especially if the guy did the breaking up, actually, I think it, it, it works both ways. In a breakup, it can stir a lot of insecurities in yourself, especially if you're the one that did the breaking up, guy or girl. Um, sorry, especially if you you were the one that was broken up with. That's what I meant to say. Um, if you're the one that w- was broken up with, there are a lot of insecurities that can come into play. 
because you can feel as if you are not good enough. What if I did something differently? I'm the reason why they broke up with me. Um, I'm flawed. And it's, it leads you down a road of self-discovery. And you get to choose whether you self-discover and come out healthy or you remain in that self-discovery and end up in a pit of insecurities. And that is a choice. That is one million percent a choice. And I've told several people um, within the past couple of years who have gone through a breakup, this is just a season. It is a choice. And at some point it has an expiration date, but grieve. I encourage you to grieve. I encourage you to walk through that and cry the hard tears, eat the ice cream, but then go hit the gym, you know? <laughs> um, but most, most, first and foremost, commit everything in prayer. So that's my first tip for you. My second tip for you is to let your feelings flow. And I know a lot of people probably won't agree with this. The theologians, theologians who are very big on don't be in touch with your feelings. Look, the Lord designed the feelings for a reason. He designed emotions. Um, Jesus wept for crying out loud. He showed emotion in grief. So we should also tap into that and show emotion. Now I'm not saying to be a Debbie Downer walking around with a cloud over your head and woe is me and poor little me and I'm so sad every single second of the day. You have to also have control over your emotion. Otherwise your emotions will have control over you. And one, you'll be miserable to be around with. And two, that will delay your healing because you, you're so focused on the feelings that you're not seeing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So. Tap into your feelings, let your feelings flow, cry it out, find a friend to cry with, to talk with, to, to talk through the things that you're feeling, um, the thoughts that you're having, because you aren't meant to do life alone. And with a breakup, especially a breakup that you were dating for years, a severe heartache, that requires a lot of talking and someone to hold your hand and cry with you and listen to you and be there for you and ask you the hard questions and challenge you to delete the pictures, block him, block her. And that's not blocking out of malice or hate or anger. That is blocking in protecting yourself in saying, I right now, my mental capacity can only handle so much. So I will remove any access I have towards you so that I can heal. And in healing, sometimes it requires removing that person entirely because if you see their posts, if you see things that's going on in their life, it can be very difficult to, to, to get to the healing point because you're thinking, well, I should have been there or what if this or what if that? And that's completely normal, completely justified. But if you want healing, you have to take drastic steps. If you want change, you have to take bold steps. So tap into your feelings. Number two. And number three, take it one day at a time. Healing is not a sprint. It's not a marathon. A marathon. Healing takes time. Take it one day at a time. And if you have a friend that's telling you, oh, it's been three weeks, it's been a month, it's been two months, ditch that friend. They don't know what they're talking about. They're, obviously, you've never been in love before. It takes one day at a time to get over a breakup. And um, I will insert this here. If they, if you guys were ever sexually involved, it will take a very long time to get over, quote unquote, that that breakup. Because whenever you are sexually involved in a relationship, that creates a deep connection with someone. You gave a part of yourself to her, and he gave a, a part of himself to you. That is so special and, and requires a deep connection. And the Lord, yes, can redeem that. The Lord can heal those wounds. However, it won't take overnight to heal that. And it won't take another person being sexually involved with to get over your breakup. It, that, that's just adding on wounds and compounding the problem. So, Take it one day at a time. If you were sexually involved, if you had any type of physical relationship with them, um, outside of like kissing, even, and kissing is intimate, don't get me wrong, kissing is highly intimate, but outside of kissing, if there was anything more, it will take a lot of time. Be honest with yourself and forgive yourself. 
because especially as females, I feel like when we go into relationships, we want to give her all. And I have friends who have been honest about this. They gave their all. And when I say they all, they're all, they gave up their virginity for someone that they loved. And then two, three years later, they broke up. And there's so much, so, so much regret. And it's, well, I thought I was going to marry them. So we went for it and it hurts. There's a lot of pain and there's a lot of self-inflicted shame, but God can heal. God can redeem. God can restore. And I have friends today who are married, happily married, who had made past mistakes in previous relationships, but their spouse doesn't hold that over their head. And, um, and that's because they married someone really good. But they also forgave themselves and they understood, hey, this was a time and a period in my life where I really wasn't thinking straight and I thought with uh, feelings more than uh, practicality. So I say all that to say, it will require a lot of time. Give yourself a break and take it one day at a time. Next tip is practice self-care. With breakups, um, and Jared was talking to me about this too, I asked him his opinion on like, what do people struggle with with breakups? And he says one of the biggest things is people either overeat or undereat. And um, that is an issue that people overlook. And culturally, we encourage the overeating. And I mean, I mentioned it earlier in this episode, I said, you know, eat the ice cream and then hit the gym afterwards. But truly, in, in movies and in TV shows, we see girls go through breakups, they binge eat ice cream, and they have a bunch of snacks, they're crying. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that to some degree. I do believe you need a community of people to be with you and walk with you, pray with you. And if a bag of hot Cheetos does the fix, hey, why not? But if it becomes a lifestyle, then that's where, the, where it becomes a problem, where you find food as a crutch and a source of enjoyment and gives you that dopamine hit because you're lacking something in your life and you're lacking love and affection from the person that you used to be in love with or are still in love with, but you're going through a terrible heartache. So self-care, practice, practicing, practicing, whoa, self-care will take work. And there's either, there's either one extreme or the other. And for some people, they don't eat and they don't want to eat. They don't desire to eat because there's such a major pit in their stomach that they feel sick because they miss the one that they love. If that is you, if either end of the spectrums are you, I would highly encourage you to find someone to keep you accountable and check in daily. Hey, have you eaten today? Hey, what did you eat today? Um, do I need to come over and clear out your pantry? Do I need to come over and bring over dinner? Hey, let's go grab dinner together. And while you're at dinner, hey, take another bite. Take another bite. Take another bite. And encourage them to eat. Because some people, it drastically affects their health one way or another. Practicing self-care also includes if you're a girl, go get your nails done. Go do your hair. Get that hair chopped. Go shopping. Um... And all of this, I'm not just targeting food, but anything that can become an idol and a crutch to mask the pain of a broken heart. So there is, it does require um, uh, self-control in all these different areas, but self-care, take care of you, do something new, go travel, go somewhere else, Re refresh your mind and see the world from a different perspective. If you're a guy, have a guy's night, have a bro night, go play Fortnite, uh, pickleball, whatever. I don't know what boys do that. My husband, he plays pickleball and he plays Fortnite and the Smash Brothers and Mario Kart, Mario Party. I, I don't know. Do what boys do and go hang out. Um, there are plenty of fun things to do to clear your head and reset that doesn't require um, over spirituality. Because I think too, sometimes as believers, especially seasoned leaders, we think, oh, just spend your time in the word of God and you will be perfectly fine. Let's be realistic. That doesn't fix anything. Yes, feeding your spirit with the word of God, feeding your spirit with, with worship music and renewing your mind and plugging into a spiritual source 
is vital. However, you are also supposed to, you're also supposed to enjoy life. And it might require you to take a trip down to Waco or go to Paris or go to Greece or just hang out with some friends and laugh and have fun and talk and be real. You have to have balance and you have to have both. Another tip is go through the steps of grief. And this one's very important. I feel like we like to rush um, grief. We, tr we like to rush break it, breakups and we just want to get to the other side, which that's a great plan and a goal to have. However, the stages of grief, we all go through it, whether we like to believe it or not, whenever we're grieving about something, but there's denial, there's anger, there's bargaining, there's sadness, and then there's acceptance. And we just immediately, immediately want to jump to the acceptance without going through the other stages. And if we immediately jump to acceptance, what we're essentially doing is brushing the whole issue under a rug and it becomes a mountain, a mountain pile of emotions that one thing one good thing could trigger you and it comes exploding. So I encourage you, denial. No, we're not really broken up. No, he'll come back. No, she'll come back. No, maybe it'll work out someday. Anger, it's okay to be angry. Angry at yourself, angry at them. And then you bargain, what if? Maybe this, maybe that. And then you finally hit sadness where it's almost acceptance, but you're sad. You know, man, I lost someone. I really loved them. We had a really good time. And then you accept it. You accept it and you say, you know what? We're broken up. That was a time and a season of my life. I made or may have not made mistakes. This was the right thing. Or maybe you feel like it wasn't the right thing, but you've accepted this is where you are now. And it's time to move on. Go through the steps of grief. Don't feel as if you have to get to the acceptance the day after you've broken up. It takes time. Your heart is very fragile and it takes time to get to that point where you're ready to move on and say, this is my new life. And then lastly, this is a big one. Do not date too soon. Oh my gosh, don't date too soon. I've seen so many people just jump into relationships right after. And here's, here's the thing. If you broke up with someone and you immediately jump into another relationship, say two, three weeks later, especially if this is a relationship that you were in for a year or two, that's called like a long-term or a very long relationship. You're in a relationship that was over a year long and you broke up and with that person and you jumped into another relationship fairly quickly, major red flag. Either you're using that person as a crutch or two, you never truly love the person that you were in a relationship with and that person that you're currently in a relationship with now was orbiting in your second option or your first option the entire time. Or I wager to say you're playing around and you were talking that to that person while you were in a relationship and that's why you immediately got into a new one with them when you broke up. So major, major red flag, major red flag. Take time before you jump into a new relationship. Your, your heart needs to heal and you're doing injustice to someone else if you immediately jump into a new relationship because you truly haven't healed your heart, healed your mind and broken off that tie you had with the, the, the person that you previously dated. So. Those are my tips for you. If you resonate with, I just broke up with my significant other. Um, if that if that's you, take it easy, take it slow. Don't put pressure on yourself to get over things easily, but also don't stay there too long. And that's a choice. Both are a choice. And there's no specific time frame. I wish I can say, okay, in three months, you should be 1 million percent better and you should be in the acceptance era, in the, in the acceptance uh, phase of 
this breakup. I wish I could say that, but all of our hearts are designed differently and all of our hearts require different time frames for healing. But say that with, at a certain point, the breakup, the heartache, the pain has an expiration date and you get to choose how to move on. You get to choose to how, how, how you come out of that relationship and how, how you come out of that breakup. It either makes or break you. You either come out extremely wounded and insecure for the rest of your life or victorious, strong, and confident as you face a new relationship. So that's it for today in all the relationship series, things that we talk about this week. Join me next episode. I will see y'all like, share, subscribe, do all the things. See y'all next time. Every Life is America's pro-life diaper and wipes company. My family absolutely loves them. There's no harsh toxins. There's no chemicals. It's perfectly safe for your little one. We love Every Life, their mission, their vision, everything about them. Use my code VASHTY10 for 10% off your first order. That is VASHTY10 for 10% off your first order.